Thanks for being with us, Max. Am I crazy or is the West trying to downplay this deal just a little bit? Well, Anissa, what we're seeing here is a transition from the petrodollar to the petro ruble. So for decades now, the price of oil and gas has been priced in U.S. dollars. With this $400 billion deal with China, uh, we now see a shift uh, of the pricing in energy going toward Russia and China. This means the U.S. dollar as world reserve currency, its days are numbered. And this is also uh, manifest in the actions by Russia this past month to almost quadruple their purchase of gold. Uh, so Russia has been buying uh, gold every month uh, for several years. They have now quadrupled that monthly purchase because they're getting ready for the, the time when the U.S. dollar starts to rapidly lose value against other currencies. Gold will start to be marked up aggressively. So both China and Russia have been buying gold. They're now going to price energy in something other than the U.S. dollar. So this is really the dawn of the petro ruble. They couldn't agree, Moscow and Beijing, on a price for a really long time, and it's still a so-called commercial secret. Why? Um, can you repeat the question? <laughs> uh, they're calling it a commercial secret, the actual precise price of this gas flowing to China. It's a big deal, of course, but why can't we know the exact price? What does that mean between uh, f for China and Russia, how close they are, how maybe they don't want to release that to the West? I mean... Is this a protocol? Well, the, the price that they negotiated, whether uh, I think Russia was looking for $400 per 1,000 cubic meters. Uh, Russia is looking for 360 per 1,000 cubic meters. So there was some last minute haggling over price. It's a uh, multi-year deal. It's uh, China's got to pay uh, whether they uh, take delivery of the gas or not. I think more importantly, though, above and beyond the details of this specific deal, Elisa, is the fact that on a macroeconomic basis, the U.S. dollar is now poised to lose its status as world reserve currency. This is extraordinarily important in the post-war era, where the U.S. has used the dollar as a bludgeon to increase its global hegemony, to buy stuff from China and never pay for it. They just issue more dollars. Once the dollar loses its place for as world reserve currency, the price of energy in America will double and triple. That's the underlying economic assumption that we have to make here. That's what the U.S. is not telling the people in the U.S. Plus, let me point out another very interesting fact that came out today. All the fracking that's going on in California, two-thirds of America's fracking, and remember, fracking is going to be their answer to this deal between Russia and China to supply them with energy. Well, it turns out, according to today's report, that the estimate of the amount of gas that California will generate through its fracking field has been overstated by 96 percent which is to say that America's fracking industry is dead on arrival. There's not going to be any gas from America's fracking industry. China and Russia are not going to completely monopolize the global gas industry, and they're going to price it in something other than the U.S. dollars. Whether they're haggling over 360 or $400 per thousand cubic meters is irrelevant, given the bigger picture. Just briefly, Max, what option does the United States have? What options do they have? Their options for the last few decades has been to bomb and take. That's been their options. That's been the Americans' oil policy has been to use their, the Pentagon and the dollar as a instruments of global hegemony to uh, secure the world's oil supply. You see this happening in Africa where the U.S., is busy creating all kinds of mischief in Africa to secure oil where their competitor China is in Africa just cutting deals or cutting checks. And of course, China's got trillions of dollars worth of reserves and they can write lots of checks. So uh, the U.S., with the recourse for the U.S. is, I'd say their recourse is nothing. Uh, you know, you, world, world reserve currency come and go. Before uh, America had the world reserve currency, it was Great Britain. And before that, Different countries took turns, whether it was France, Portugal, Spain, going back to, uh, you know, the 1500s. Different countries have had their turn as world reserve currency. Now America has to pass the baton from having the world reserve currency to another country or a group of countries or a consortium of countries. It could be the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, which encompasses China, Russia, and Iran. So those three countries are really going to be setting the price going forward. And whoever sets the price is going to make the the most money in those commodities. So the U.S. really doesn't have any recourse except to uh, be in denial 
uh, that's their, unfortunately, I hate to say it about my own country, but uh, their days as the number one world reserve currency are now, I would say, done. Max Kaiser, thanks so much for being in the now.